Samurai Champloo is my favorite anime of all time. The soundtrack, animation, story, and characters are absolutely amazing to me. What is up, it is your boy Bugsy and today I will be talking about how Samurai Champloo is one of the best and underrated animes of all time. I will also cover a theme which I think is extremely important. The Journey A small warning before I start the video. It will sound like a lot of glazing, and I may sound a lot more excited than normal because I really do love this anime. Sit back, relax, grab some snacks, and let's dive into one of the greatest early 2000s anime, Samurai Champloo. Samurai Champloo is a 26 episode anime that aired back in May 2004 and finished in March 2005. Written by Masuru Gatsubu, and let me say, they cooked in this anime, the same creator who created Cowboy Bebop, which is also peak anime as well. With the legendary soundtrack with Nujibes, Bad John, Force of Nature, and Suchi, this anime is nothing but the ultimate vibes. In fact, this is the anime that I would recommend to anyone who is new to anime or also a veteran in the scene. In the beginning, we are introduced to Fu, who is a young girl working in a ramen shop and kind of existing in life. All of a sudden, a random man comes and looks for some dumplings, yet he has no money. A man of royalty with his thugs starts causing commotion and this ends up with Mugen being offered 100 dumplings to save the day. This starts the journey of finding the samurai who smells of sunflowers. Jin eventually comes in and explains he killed the governor's ronin and Mugen is looking to fight someone strong and boom, they fight. Somehow they end up blowing up the ramen shop and getting captured by the government soldiers. Fu comes in and rescues them and in exchange for saving them, they must help her on the journey to find her father. She flips a coin and it lands on the side which has them agree to work with them. The official beginning to the story. We see throughout the entire anime how their dynamic continues to grow and grow over time. While they search for the samurai who smells of sunflowers, we see our friends go on many different adventures. They are being hunted down by the government but continue to follow true to their word to Fu. In the earlier episodes, we see Fu befriend a monster and Mugen gets caught up with a woman who tries to poison him. Fu shows her humanity which ends up saving her life when the monster kills her capturer and then he ends up dying by Mugen. Moving forward through Edo period Japan, fighting samurais, losing money, eating on the time, and ended up playing baseball. Our friends had a journey. Seeing the origin stories of our characters at different times gave them more depth. Who stayed with her mother her entire life and not having an idea what happened to her father? Which we do find out what happened at the end of the journey. Mugen had a very rough pass as being a bandit and once he decided he didn't want to participate in those activities, he was set up and left for dead. His story comes full circle and eventually free from his past. Lastly, Jin was the samurai who became famous for killing his dojo's master. However, there was a deeper reason as to why that happened. One thing that was also showed throughout Samurai Champloo was our characters started to form romantic relationships with other characters. Not the characters that of course were together a majority of the time, but I'm speaking about when Jin ended up finding a woman who was sold out to a brothel due to her husband being in debt. He wanted to be with her. He wanted to save her because I'm assuming, which we saw in the anime, she showed him a different side of things and Jin really wanted to help her. Same thing with Mugen. We saw Mugen had a woman that he seemed to be fond over but eventually knew that they could never work out. And of course we see him with the police woman and he was fondling all over her in which I completely understand of course she was quite attractive I fear. Anyways let's go ahead and get back into the video essay. We see that our characters have much deeper reasons for why they are together and it is not as black and white as portrayed to the audience. Taking a small pause regarding the story let's talk about two important factors that end up elevating this amazing retro anime. The two factors being the music and also the animation. The music which was created by Nujibes, Fat John, Force of Nature, and Suchi is one of the major highlights. Every scene, intro, outro, and important moments were completely elevated by the musical score. Whether it was the battle cry intro, Shiki no Uta outro, or even Misaline, all of these songs elevated the anime. Quickly, 
I want to say rest in paradise to Seba June, aka New Jabez. Without this anime and the amazing soundtracks that you created, I would have not been able to discover your music. Thank you. You saved my life and more than likely a lot of other people who also became a fan of you and also became a fan of jazzy hip hop and what we consider to be modern day lo-fi music. I hope you're resting peacefully. Let's talk about the animation. While this is a 22 year old anime, the animation style and the movement makes this anime feel quite retro. Importantly, you feel the vibes of Edo period Japan with the addition of jazzy hip hop. Now we fast forward to the ending of the story, which ends the journey of our friends. Who finds the samurai who smells of sunflowers, which is ironic because sunflowers do not have a scent. Mugen and Jin end up being friends, which is so sad because Jin never had any friends. And this is when the journey is over. They all go their separate ways, and that is the end of the story. I remember distinctively watching the last episode and did not want it to end. Loki almost cried because I knew that there was not a season two and that their journey was truly over. However, this anime is not focused on the destination, but the journey. One thing I noticed after watching the anime many times is that the journey is what we as the audience loves the most. There were many different moments where we saw laughs, cries, pain, love, and anger. Very similar to real life. As a teenager and young adult, we tend to focus only on the destination or the end goal, but not the journey of how we get there. High school Bugsy was one to get out of his parents' house and get straight to the money and to freedom and to all the beautiful women in the world who also should want to be with me because um, I'm Bugsy. Nice to meet you. <sighs> Man, do I wish I enjoyed being a teenager and not try to grow up so quickly? Because the world fucking sucks. So if you are still in your parents' house, enjoy that shit while it lasts. Not gonna lie to you, twin. Most people in high school and college are only looking forward to graduation. Once they reach graduation, the slow realization that their journey throughout school is over and goes by quickly. There is a reason why many people tend to reminisce so much on the past and how they wish they could appreciate it. I miss the small adventures I would go on in college and some of the moments that would happen. Whether it was doing things with friends, going to football games, or even traveling during spring break. It was such a good time. Then boom, you're in your 20s, starting a career, having children, or even going back to school, or sitting around making video essays about anime, and 20 years old, and um, you know, trying to make life work. Of course, I'm not talking about myself, right? <laughs> Anyways, we all are in different avenues and parts in life. Sometimes you have to go and revisit those vibes. Maybe go back to your alumni homecoming, see your friends on a random weekend, FaceTime your homegirl, or FaceTime the baby girl who you really want to be with, but you know, you couldn't be with her because she had a dude on the football team that went D1 is currently playing in the NFL and you had no luck because you were short and fat and you got no riz. Or you can simply look at some old photos and just look back and see what things used to be back in the day. We tend to think that it is the destination that defines us as humans, but that is not true. It is a journey that we all partake in which defines us. Entrepreneurs, athletes, musicians, etc. always talk about how they reach the point they are in their life. Yes, the destination is important because it shows a level of success or failure. Once you reach one of them, people tend to want a deep dive in how you got there. And well, that is what we call the journey. One message that I got from watching Samurai Champloo is to enjoy the journey of life. Do not try to speed through life because once those days are gone, they're gone forever. I urge people to enjoy the moments and to not stress. Eat good food, listen to good music, shoot your shot with the person you like, pursue your dreams, watch your favorite animes over and over, and most importantly, subscribe to Bugsy on YouTube. <laughs> All jokes aside, I really hope the people who watch this video and hopefully the anime start to appreciate life a little bit more. I know life can seem a bit unfair and pretty bad, but we still must learn to enjoy the moments that we have before they are gone. A lesson that I have learned in my mid-20s and hope gets taught to the younger folks 
and even people older than me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Feel free to join the Patreon or become a member on the YouTube channel if you truly like the content. If not, no big deal. I'm glad you stayed around to watch the video. Let me know in the comments down below if you have seen Samurai Champloo and what message you got from the anime. Also, what is your favorite song in the anime? Have a great day. And remember, don't get mad. Thank you to Booty. And rest in paradise, Seba June, aka News the Biz. And you know what? And Jay Dilla. Peace out.